Hi, right, Bobby. How you doing, buddy? Good seeing you, pal. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Everything going all right? Everything's well. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad you could make it. I know we've talked, but really some neat stuff going on down here, and I think you're going to find it really interesting and very, very informative. Well, great. I look forward to learning about the mystery of the uh, brain. Yeah, believe me. Let's go back and introduce you to all Dr. Right, Rankin. Great. Good. How are you? This is the guy I've been telling you about, David Hamley, hey, Dave. Dr. Rankin. Good, good to nice see to you. Meet you. Good to see you. Dave, uh, hopefully get a little training in the brain here uh, with his golf game. This is a good place to start because this turns out to be not just a nice piece of wall art, but actually a very useful instruction way of giving people introduction to the brain and the different parts of the brain. And the things that are relevant for you and, and golfers are uh, things like, you know, this is the area where your swing, the, what we call the neuromuscular routine, the thing you've learned is really housed. And once you generate that, it, it actually activates the spinal cord and muscles to integrate the swing. And that's great. But here's a problem that comes into play sometimes, and I bet you've experienced this. If you start thinking too much and analyzing uh, too much, it begins to interfere with this this neuromuscular routine and it can mess it up and you know what thinking too much on the golf course is. Certainly one of the one of the aspects of, of Bob's explanation of the process was that intrigued me I have had uh, difficulty at the beginning of a round with a certain amount of anxiety mm -hmm. in hitting the shot it should be easy for me to, to complete and and then the last part of the round I seem to have fatigue or inability to continue the round. Okay, it's interesting. Let's take the first point first about anxiety and emotion. You know, we are emotional beings with the ability to rationalize. Emotion drives a lot of our behavior. There is a big link between this emotion area of the brain and these frontal lobes which integrate action. They influence each other. Now, if you've got too much emotion going, that can influence your judgment, and your executive action, that can impact your swing, and it certainly can put a big dent in your game. Because uh, I know, Bob, Bob has told me, you're a, a champion, you obviously have the neuromuscular routine, the swing up here, that works really well. What we've got to try to do, as we do with lots of athletes, is prevent the emotion getting too much so that it influences this, prevent the emotion getting too much, so that it doesn't influence your judgment and your planning. That's the secret. The secret of athletic performance, in a way, also lies in here. This is called the sensory motor strip, and that's the integration of sensory motor information that really is, if there was a zone in the brain that related to the zone in performance, it would be right there. Now, you talk about fatigue. Um, the brain weighs about 2% of your body weight, but it uses 20 to 25% of your oxygen supply. Uh, it doesn't really store glucose, which it needs to fuel it, so it's constantly needing to get glucose to make sure all of this works properly. And as you fatigue, particularly you get towards the end of a round, there's a real risk this starts not to be as efficient and that's where you're getting some of these problems, probably at the end of the round. From a glucose standpoint though, I attempted to, to uh, feed myself during the round right. to make sure that, that I don't have the physical lax right. of fatigue. I'm talking more of the fatigue with the, the quality of the game. Right. And it may be that although you think that physically you've met your glucose needs, maybe you haven't. You know, it's like hydration. You know, as soon as you start to feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. And it takes a while. You can't just take a drink and expect to immediately be hydrated. It takes a while for that to actually impact the system. And the same might be going on. I don't know, the same might be going on. We'd have to analyze that for you. But a big part of golf, you know, a four hour uh, time span, uh, and you're only using, what, two or three percent of that time to actually hit the ball. 
Um, there's plenty of time to lose focus, lose attention, uh, even drop energy. And those are the things we're going to look at. We're going to look at what's actually going on in your game, what's going on in your brain, and come up with the best ways of training you so you can overcome these problems. You can really do that. Absolutely. Uh, we get a lot of fun out of, of seeing people improve their performance. And of course, these things like the management of emotion, better attention, the right level of relaxation are helpful not just for your game, but they're helpful in life in general. And, and one of the things that I think people don't realize is, you, you know, we're training our brain all the time, 24-7. Mm -hmm. So we can't expect to suddenly get on the golf course or the tennis court or wherever and it to act differently than the way we do the rest of the time. So, so, so a lot of this is about doing things and training your brain that's going to transfer from life into sporting performance. So, What's the yeah. first step? First step is a brain map. Let me come and show you what that is. Hi, Rachel. Hi. David, as a matter of fact, you know this young lady, Rachel, Hi, Rachel. Ramovich. Hi, how's it going? She's well, thanks. How are you? Good. She's just in the process of getting ready to get brain mapped. I like your hat. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so Rachel is uh, about to be brain mapped, and we're in what we call the impedance. But as you see, she's wearing this stylish uh, EEG cap. And this is the, the brainwave activity on the left side, and this is the right. And actually, these are the brainwaves again on left and right. Um, and so these go up the scale from about 5 hertz to 30 hertz. So just looking at the brain map, you know, we can look at the activity, it records it. Um, we get uh, a good printout of all the data. The, the data itself will tell us what areas of the brain are understimulated, if there are any, which areas are overstimulated. Um, we'll also look at, integrate all the data that we have about you, what, what you tell us about your experience, uh, what we find out from cognitive testing, what the brain map tells us, and then I'll make a determination of what are the areas we really need to target. Um, and this is obviously an important, but not the only part of making that decision. Well, what's next? Well, let me just uh, show you some of the other things like the cognitive test. Please. Um, and we'll show you how we do that. There's a young lady right now, a tennis player from North Carolina, taking the test. Uh, uh, okay, so we, we won't go in just yet, but um, I will show you uh, what that looks like, the cognitive test, uh, when she's finished. Matter of fact, right now, uh, Scott Stillwell, your former golf professional, is getting some entrainment as we speak. And we can just interrupt him a minute. He's just relaxing in the area with his uh, goggles that flash a particular light to get the brain down in the frequency and the head set where the sounds are trying to get the brain into, in his case, we just set it up for the relaxation frequency to get your brain down into that state. Well, let's leave him to, to continue yeah. to relax. That's pretty much our three areas, Dave, and then Dr. Rankin uh, works with you for about an hour and his assessment of all the information that we've gathered through these areas and I'd like to get you rolling. So, you know, we're set, we'll get all the information, we'll get your experience, what it is that you're trying to change. We'll do the brain map and get a picture of exactly what's going on in your brain. We'll do the cognitive testing. There are some online questionnaires about lifestyle, and cognition, and emotions that, again, are helpful to the, you know, create this big picture of you. Then you and I will sit down, we'll go over all of the data, and then decide here's what we call our enhanced performance plan, how we are going to target specific things and the ways that we're going to do that. And we'll get going. I'm anxious to be helped. Yeah, that's good. It's great to see you. Dave. Thank you. Nice yeah, to meet really you. I'm really looking forward to working David, with you. Thanks for coming. Bobby, in. nice seeing you, pal. Thank okay. You. Take care. Yeah, bye now. Bye. Well, thank you for the introduction, Bobby. You got it, buddy. Interesting stuff, isn't it? It's wonderful. Can't wait to get you going with it. I look forward to it.